This is Boxing Tickets and I were here at the final press conference for Crocker Felix. Delighted to be joined with Paddy, the real deal, Donovan. It only seems like yesterday, I guess it only was yesterday, obviously on Friday I've seen you in, in Dublin for the, the press conference for your brother Edward. Um, I guess a return to the, the, the debut scene, obviously 2019, obviously you made your debut in the Ulster Hall. I, I know it obviously shared a clip yesterday and you'd seen it, obviously you never forget your debut. I guess in some ways you may be looking to experience a bit more of the atmosphere in the Ulster Hall on Saturday night, would that be fair to say? Yeah, so excited to be back in Belfast. Um, I became uh, like they've opened their arms completely up for me for the last couple of years since my debut. And I've got a lot of fans from Belfast, so it's an amazing opportunity to be back here fighting in, in front of the Belfast people, especially the Ulster Hall where I made my debut. Um, it's, it's a place that I hold very, very close to my heart because it's where I kicked off my professional career. So delighted to be back, delighted to get, in, get into the ring and absorb it all again, listen to that crowd and just perform. You're obviously on a, a good bit of a roll at the moment, obviously been on two of the Katie Taylor cards, um, obviously and then starting off the year here in Belfast. It seems to be that, I guess, you're the sort of what you'd say is a, probably the model pro. You're always always in the gym, always ready to fight. When the sort of call came late December, you were just only, only too happy to accept the fight. Yeah, obviously we'd like the Christmas off with the family. Um, it's the time of year that you want to be spending with your family, but this is what I do. This is the business of boxing. Um, I'm at the position right now that you need to be ready and staying ready. Um, big opportunity arises just like this did. So, yeah, in the gym, got out to Saudi to Andy and Joseph, continued our training camp right through. Now we're back here in Belfast. When I last spoke, you obviously was saying, you know, you're going to try and get a free ticket over to Saudi. You obviously got there to experience it. Like... I guess for, for a lot of people, maybe see obviously Joe Parker obviously beating Deontay Wilder and things a big shock, but I guess anybody that sort of knows boxing knows that Wilder was mostly all right hand. Were you seriously impressed by how, how Joe was able to keep himself disciplined throughout the fight? Yeah, look, he's endurance, he's um, discipline, he's, he's, he's brain to, to, stay, to stay, um, stay in shape, keep, keep everything that he's worked out with Andy in the gym and executed on the night was absolutely brilliant, second to none. So he did everything that was planned. Um, obviously you don't know what Deontay Wilder, what Deontay Wilder can turn up, what performance he can turn up, but you have to do your part, which is take all the right boxes, continue he's training really hard with Andy, work on specific things, and yeah, hopefully he can execute him in the fight. So that was the plan, he did exactly that. I guess it's probably testament to obviously Andy and obviously how great a coach he is. Obviously we know that Joe obviously was beat by Joe Joyce and you're sort of going wilder fight, you know, sort of is this the end sort of, but I guess it shows how close knit the, the, the training environment is with Andy and obviously he was able to get the best out of Joe and stick to a plan. Yeah, for Andy and Joe it takes time for a coach to connect with a fighter or a fighter to connect with a coach. I don't understand how... Um, fighters just go, jump with a new coach and expect big things. You've seen it with Michael Conlon with his new coach. Things just didn't go to plan. But in time, um, you generate this yeah, kind of collaboration together where you, you, just, you just bond together. So and that's what happened with Joseph and Andy. They just bonded at the right time. And people saying that Wilder was on the decline, or sorry, um, Joseph was on the decline. I don't think so. Joseph is looking as good as he ever did right now in the gym. How did you find it, obviously, over in Saudi? Obviously, I've seen that everybody obviously wanted a picture with Paddy Donovan, obviously McGregor and everybody else there. Does it sort of whet the appetite for you, to obviously, to get big fights in the future over there? That's where the money's at at the moment in boxing. And, and let's face it, as a boxer, you obviously want to make as much as you can, as quickly as you can, because you don't know how long it'll last for. Yeah, correct. Um, boxing is a short career. You have about 10 years at the top. Yeah, it'd be great to fight out in Saudi. It'd be great. And these big connections out there, so hopefully... Um, Sooner rather than later, I get my opportunity to fight, fight in Saudi. But look, for now, we've got a job to do on Saturday. We've got a job to do in May, and we move forward, forward from there. Obviously, your opponent obviously has never been stopped. Do you sort of look at that as a sort of benchmark and go, they obviously, to be the first person to stop him as well as that, making another statement? Or, I guess, what we're seeing from you, obviously, and you predicted it very early on, that you'll get a lot of stoppages with your left hand, which you're proving quite a lot of your fights. Do you sort of go in Saturday night going, I want the stoppage or just to be looking good and if it comes, it comes? Yeah, i got to be careful because this is a fight where I'm expected to win. Um, even though my opponent is very, very good, William Marrero is very, very strong, very durable. Um, never been stopped, as you said. And yeah, you can get excited and push for a knockout. But you got to see, when I'm in there, I just need to work on the things I've been working in the gym, executing them. And as I said, 
if I see the opportunity and it arises, I'll, I'll take it. A lot obviously of people's talking there, obviously have a, a potential future matchup between yourself and Lewis Crocker. I guess in some ways I'd probably be sort of selfish in the way in Gomo. Paddy obviously can be the leading light in the south, Lewis can be the leading light in the north. Obviously we need someone to take over here from Mick Conlon obviously in the north. Is it probably, I guess everybody's going to make them matchups, they obviously want to see the best fight and the best. For you is it sort of, you're happy to let it keep ticking over I guess. The, the bigger the fight gets, the more money you can both make. Yeah, look, um, Lewis tipped on it yesterday himself. Um, if it's a major payday, if it's life-changing money for both of us, of course we can fight. You know, it, that's a different story or a major belt on the line. But for two Irish stars, just get in there for the, for the good of the Irish fans. I don't think we should do it right now. We see it in England a lot. Um, the top UK prospects, they don't really match each other until later in the career. And it's the same in the US. So, yeah, even though the Irish fans want it right now, unless... Um, there's big, big money involved or a big, big title. I think that's the only way we can fight. I guess there's one person on the card maybe you could have your eyes on, Conor Walker. Obviously, he's ranked with the WBA as well, I think. So is maybe the idea that obviously Matchroom's put Conor Walker on the card is maybe the, the toy with the idea of, of him fighting at a year earlier? Yeah, Conor Walker has a challenge too ahead of him. He's up against a Welsh kid, I think, with nine fights, nine wins. So, yeah, um, as I said, I'd be ready for anybody when it comes when the opportunity comes i need to just take care of myself be right in my mind keep working in the gym and if it's Connor walker or whoever the, the opponent is i'll be ready obviously eddie hearn obviously is saying he wants, he wants to have a, a show for yourself in limerick um and, it's, and i think it's coming as well i don't want to say too much but is this obviously the 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 highlight for you it's sort of you know you know i've obviously spoke about it many times obviously getting so many boxers in limerick and getting the show back down there for you is it just just for you, obviously, just worrying, just for Saturday night, and then hopefully that could be the next one. Yeah, look, I've came so far already in my career. Um, I'm so happy how far I've came, and to headline my own show in my own city would be would be a tremendous feeling. You know, get all the, the pro fighters, the, get all the Irish, or the, all the Limerick and Irish fans down there. It, it would be just an amazing thing to do. So, yeah, so happy that the position that I'm in. I'm so happy for Irish boxing that... I can entertain them for the next five or seven or ten years, hopefully. So, yeah, we got to see. Hopefully, Eddie can keep to his word and we get the show in Limerick. And obviously, speaking obviously not only yourself and Edward, but obviously your Jim's obviously turning over as well. Um, you'd sort of said to me on Friday, get an interview with him once he calls someone out. When's obviously Jim looking at hoping to get getting the debut out 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 and away? Yeah, Jim looks to be making his debut in March. It's not confirmed, but it's looking around that month. Um, he's four fights in America, four fights back in Ireland, the UK in the next 12 months, so he'll be very, very busy. Um, I don't want to speak too much who he's with right now, but yeah, it's looking good for Jim. Um, he's a special talent, very, very talented, but he needs to work hard, he's a long way to go. And um, yeah, keep in the gym and see how far his career can go too. I guess in some ways, obviously, he sees what's happened with you and Edward, he seemed to be both avoided, obviously, domestically here in Ireland. He's obviously going to learn something very quickly that obviously the Donovan name that people just don't want to be associated with at all. Yeah, it's extremely hard to get fights. Even Edward is struggling at the moment. But yeah, Jim is Jim and Edward is really, really good fighters, and I think they're kind of underestimated right, especially Edward kind of underestimated right now. But bigger the fight for Edward, bigger uh, the performance will be. So Edward is another great young fighter. He's looking good. He's fighting in February 9th. Jim is out in March. So yeah, busy year for the Donovan family. Well, listen, thanks very much for your time. Obviously, enjoy being back in the Ulster Hall again Saturday night, and I'm sure we'll no doubt catch up with you very soon. Yeah, best of luck to my younger brother Martin, who starts his championship um, the same day that I fight. So, good luck, Martin. We're all rooting for you. Cheers, buddy. Take care.